Hi, Lorcan O'Toole here for Fingal Community TV and today we bring you a special report. We have gained exclusive access to inside the Rings End treatment plant. Many people in Fingal are wondering just what it is that's being proposed by the County Council. What does a wastewater treatment plant actually look like? Let's go and find out. Come with me. Okay, so with me now is Michael Phillips, project engineer with Dublin City Council, and he's going to just explain the various stages in the process and what the different installations are. Michael, do you want to give us a run-through on the site here? Well, Lurkin, what you have is all the sewage from the city, Dunleary and Fingal, actually uh, come right down here into uh, the Rings End treatment works. Right. The small building over there uh, with the low-lying uh, roof is where all the uh, sewage enters uh, the treatment plant and that's where the initial screens are where all the uh, paper and various other articles are taking off and just on this side of the building is where all that rubbish is taken out into sealed containers so it is the the liquid then passes into these tanks where we where what we call the fog process is carried out and that is the removal of fats oils and greases and then we have primary settlement as well uh, in these tanks over here uh, to, uh, to my right. The water then passes from the primary treatment into the secondary treatment, which are the uh, tall tanks, and there they get biological treatment where further solid material is removed from the liquid prior to it being released into the bay. The, now, the odors then emitting from both the fog tanks and the primary settlement are removed through the green pipes and the odour travels along the green pipes into what we call an odour cleaning unit uh, prior to it being released into the air so that there are no odours being released. The solids, uh, when they come off these various processes, are then transferred into the second building here that you see with the roof. And uh, at that building there is, that's where it is pasteurised at 160 degrees uh, that means it's sterilized so all the pathogens are killed and it's kept there for about 30 minutes. That then passes, uh, the solids are then pumped from there into what we call digesters. And the digesters are where there's new bugs added that actually eat the solids and they give off the gas. And that gas gives us power for 40% of the plant. So these, these tanks here in front of us with the, the green pipes, could you, just, could you tell us what's going on in there? Well, originally when we built these plants, they were open tanks and they were a source of uh, odour. And as a result, uh, we decided that they had to be covered in order to, uh, you know, for the plant to perform uh, properly and to the expectations of people that have to live in the area. Uh, they should not be subjected to the, the odours that were coming from it. So what we did was we have covered in all the tanks and any other sources as well within the plant. And what you see, uh, the green pipes are where the odour is taken off and the odour is then uh, transferred along into what we call scrubbers or cleaner, cleaning systems and then it's clean enough to be let into the air. Uh, there should be no odour at all from uh, the majority of the plant uh, when, when uh, it is in production. And people should not uh, really uh, be fully aware of what is going on within the boundaries of that plant uh, based on you know the fact that there's good odour control. Uh, in the other areas where the odours were emitting uh, we incre and we uh, did not, that were already covered in, what we have done is we've increased the odour control equipment and also increased some of the treatment plant facilities so that the air, uh, uh, problems shouldn't arise. Now I know you don't speak for Fingal County Council and I also know that it's very early in, this, in the planning process and the final technology has not been decided for the proposed Fingal plant but would you be of the view that such odour controls will be an essential part of any new plant being constructed? Yeah, there is no question about that. The, uh, this plant, uh, we are currently expanding it to its maximum of about 2.1 million. But from 2020 on, a new plant in, in the Dublin region will, will be essential. And what we are achieving today uh, is in relation to odour control is absolutely critical and will be taken as the baseline really standard for any new plant to be constructed any place in the country. 
To give me an idea of the speed, how long does it, does it take from the time a given particle or quantity enters the, the system to the time it leaves in its final forms? Uh, it would take approximately, we work on the basis of about 24 hours, so we do. Uh, on the basis that, you know, we process here in the region of approximately uh, 500 megalitres of uh, 500 million litres a day, so we do. Um, what, the, the building of these tanks in actual fact and the reason for that long process was because of an EU directive called the Urban Wastewater Directive and that set the standards that uh, the environmental standards to be expected of a river and that set limits like 25 for what we call BOD, bio, biological or uh, oxygen demand, then COD and, and suspended solids and our new plant when it was designed at that time was to meet that standard. Now further standards have been introduced and there's also the EU directive called the Water uh, Framework Directive. So constantly there are new standards being evolved and society is demanding these new standards. And so the new plants have to constantly keep improving what is processed through it. And you know the city council and any county local authority that is building a treatment plant has to adopt those new standards. And at the same time it has to make it um, uh, acceptable that uh, the plant can operate in the environment where it is located. And how clean would the water coming out be? Well the water entering, to give you an idea uh, that the water entering Dublin Bay here, uh, we treat it with ultraviolet in the summer which means it kills all pathogens going into the, the river uh, and the way the public would probably understand it is Dolly Mount which is just outside the, the harbour wall here uh, gets a blue flag which means that the quality of the water arriving at that beach is you know of the highest standard. Now I know that there are some open bays just beside us could we go and have a look at those and you could explain what's going on there? Yeah. So Michael what's happening here? Uh, well when the uh, particles get too small to actually settle out by gravity uh, what you do is you put the water into a tank like this, you pump air through it, which then causes the small particles to combine into larger particles. And then uh, when we've done that for a period of time, we then stop the air going through it and we let the particles then settle out uh, so that they, they go to the bottom. And then we take the clean water off the top and uh, that is then ready for discharge into the river. Could we just go and have a look now at the water being discharged? Michael, in the discussions about this, a lot of people in Fingal are agitating for or campaigning for tertiary treatment. Could you just explain to me what that actually means, what's involved? Tertiary treatment is actually, uh, as, as the word says, really a third uh, method of treatment. And the third method of treatment is very much dependent on the constituents that are in the liquid coming in. For instance, in, in, in Ireland here, in, in Dublin, uh, particularly as a capital city, we really have very little heavy industry. And now in other countries where you have a lot of metals, hot metals coming in, you need a very particular type of tertiary treatment to remove it. Our tertiary treatment in this country really is the removal of nitrogen and phosphorus. And that's uh, where the tertiary treatment comes in uh, to, in order to achieve the standards required by whatever the environmental local standards are. Uh, and that's where the tertiary treatment comes in. But, uh, you know, the main part of the removal uh, of the cleansing is from the normal domestic and industrial uh, effluent is in the primary, secondary uh, systems. So, Michael, this is the end product. This is flowing out into the Liffey. Yes, this is where the clean water uh, has passed through the ultraviolet, the ultraviolet treatment is in that building there and in the summer we operate that to ensure that the water is of the cleanest quality uh, and uh, it then passes from here down into an underground culvert and it goes out into the Liffey from here. The pipeline heads out in, to, the, to the sea right here behind me and around the red lighthouse that you see in the distance and across into uh, Sutton Bay uh, on, on the north side and a pumping station was constructed there. The importance of that submarine pipeline and the pumping station is that it ended the uh, sewage, the raw sewage outfall into the sea at the back of Hoth uh, Harbour. And so the Hoth Har that area of Hoth has been totally cleaned up and now all that sewage is taken into this works here uh, for treatment. So here we are at ground level where we can see the water more closely entering the river. 
Well, this here now is the final stage where, in actual fact, it has left the tanks, the high-level tanks. Uh, it passes through the ultraviolet treatment here and then uh, it comes over the waterfall which allows oxygen and air to mix with it and then uh, it enters its, uh, down into the River Liffey. Is that flow that we're seeing there, is that the normal operation flow? Does it ever get any higher? No, no, that is the normal operational flow and we can control it because this is not subject to uh, rain uh, water conditions at all. Uh, it, what dictates the flow in this channel is what can pass through the whole of the uh, treatment works. You, you mentioned there rainfall. How, how does a heavy rainfall affect the operation of the plant? Well, if you take uh, the Dublin city, because it's an old city, the sewer system is what we call a combined. The rainwater mixes with the sewage. So in times of heavy rain, you get very large flows coming into the treatment works. If it exceeds a certain figure which says our plant is, cannot normally handle that, we then have overflow tanks which are on the uh, far side of Pigeon House Road and they fill up and we store it there. Now if those tanks, if the weather is of such a nature that even those tanks fill up, it then overflows into the River Liffey, which we're allowed to do uh, in emergency situations. Uh, then when the next day, when the rain or whenever the rain has stopped, the water from those tanks and everything in them are, is pumped back into the treatment works and uh, the water is cleaned and reprocessed so that we try to minimize at any time uh, an overflow into the river. How did the plant cope at the time of the major flood a few weeks ago in the end of October? Well on that particular one on the night of the 24th yes the tanks did fill up and uh, it did overflow into the river but because of the nature of the uh, the, the sewage in, in the plant here, or the wastewater, uh, it uh, did no harm at all whatsoever to the environment. Uh, there was a high tide that night and uh, the, uh, the, all the overflow was taken out into the Irish Sea, or Dublin Bay, and uh, you know, the environment did not really suffer because the dilution factor was of a, a quantity that we, there was no con gave no cause for concern. You told me earlier that there were there was another output is the agricultural produce that you derive from the materials here. Can we go and have a look at them now? Yes, that's, uh, you're more than welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Michael, we're at pretty much the beginning of the process where the wastewater and sewage is, is entering the plant and we've got these containers here behind us. What are they for? Well, that building there is where the initial process of all the coarse screenings come off, which is all the papers and everything of a large nature is taken off. And what it's, it's then taken from that building and it is put into these sealed containers here so that you have, you have no odours uh, emitted. Uh, from the area and then it's transported away for treatment. So, so, so where do these unprocessable solids all end up? They go for a deep burial in a, a regulated landfill site where uh, everything can be checked and is uh, that the EPA would have, um, have a issued a license for. So Michael this is the other end product of the process, could you explain what's going on here? Well, this is the final product uh, where all the solids have been taken through the various processes that we've already mentioned. And uh, what you see here is the fine uh, solid that is now ready for spreading on land by uh, the farmers in uh, Carlo and Kilkenny. So, Peter, we've had a good tour of this facility here, and it's very impressive, but it's huge. How does this compare with what you have planned for Fingal? Well, what we're planning is a plant which will be approximately, at the end, uh, when it's finally built out in 2040, approximately a third of the size of this plant, and initially will be in the order of one-sixth of the size of this plant, about 16-17% of the size of this plant you're looking at here. Yeah. Be behind you we can see these very tall treatment beds. Is that something that you'd see going into Fingal? No, uh, Rings End has had to shoehorn its plant into the available site the, we're looking at a somewhat slightly larger site in Fingal for a plant maybe a third to a sixth of the size and we wouldn't anticipate building structures as high as this one here. They'd be single storey secondary treatment uh, areas. Thanks.
And in terms of the size of the plant overall, the footprint, how, how would Rings End compare? Rings End is, I think if I recall right, it's about 15.7, sorry, 15 hectares. We're looking at a site of about 16 hectares with an extra four acres for landscaping. So overall we're looking at a 20 hectare site. But I just say about four of that will be for landscaping and, and, and shading and so forth. We see here that the Rings End plant has the advantage of being able to discharge its outflow directly into the river. You won't have that opportunity with the Fingal plant, so there will, considerably, there will be a considerable amount of pipe work required. That correct? Am I, have I read the situation correctly there? Well, currently they do discharge directly into the estuary, uh, where you've seen it from the secondary tank. In fact, we will be discharging directly into the Irish Sea, and in fact, Ling's End will be discharging into the Irish Sea now in the near future, is their intent. But we will be discharging out directly into the Irish Sea, probably at least two kilometres off the shore. Okay, and are you convinced that that will protect the beaches? Uh, I am, because at the moment we are doing um, what's called um, three-dimensional hydrodynamic modelling just to give it a big word to uh, find out what is the optimum location in order to ensure that the effluent has dispersed and is no longer capable of causing any pollution. So that's why we are still not able to say yet where the ideal outfall point will be. There's huge concern among the community of Dublin North. Everybody we have spoken to is terrified of what this plant will mean for them. How can they be assured that they won't be they won't have to suffer terrible smells, for instance. Well, as you can see here behind me with these large green pipes and the covering in that's going on of all the treatment units in Rings End and the then treating of the odour that's uh, generated, this is in fact becoming standard practice. And in the newest plant we are building in Port Ran, this is what we're doing. Everything is covered in and will be drawn through a treatment. Uh, for the order, we're currently retrofitting order treatment in the other plants, and the new plant will be like that. And is the um, order generating areas will be treated. Finally, Peter, what can you say to allay the concerns of the people of Dublin North about the impact that both the construction and operation of the proposed plant will have? Well, we will have to have a construction management plan, and aside from that. Uh, in accordance with the recommendation of the SEA, we will have to in, uh, put in place mitigation um, measures to minimise the impact of construction and the impact of the construction traffic on the local communities wherever we locate the plant. So, what's my conclusion having visited Rings End? It's perhaps not quite as bad as I thought it would be, but it's still not something I'd want in my backyard. However, this is not my decision, this is your decision. You've seen what we've seen. It's up to you now to make up your mind about whether you want this facility in your area. You let your council know what you want them to do. If you're happy with this proposal going ahead, tell them. If you're not, make sure you tell them. For FCTV, I'm Lorcan O'Toole. Thanks.